Hey everybody, welcome back to another craft time with Miss Corey. I was thinking that maybe I had to show you guys how to make that yummy apple crisp that I made for uh, Caesar and for Larry, but that might be a little complicated for kids your age. But if you want to help your parents in the kitchen, just make sure that mom and dad are around to help and have a lot of fun. It's an easy recipe to do, but I thought maybe we should stick with glue and scissors and paint and all kinds of gooey stuff to get our hands messy with. So I came up with two different apple crafts to go with our story today. The first apple craft I came up with is a um, coffee filter, kind of a see-through um, cut-out apple. If you hold it up to the window and on a sunny day or hold it up to the light, you can really see how the colors come through on that. So that's kind of the fun craft to do. You can hang it in your windows, decorate your house for fall. And then I also made an apple with our little worm friend. So you can make Mac and Will. I'm kind of upside down here a minute. Here's our little worm friend coming out of his hole. And oh, he keeps falling. And in our little paper plate apple we're going to make for him. So let's go ahead and get started on these crafts today. The first one I wanna work on is our coffee filter apple. So of course, the first thing you're going to need is going to be coffee filters. And if you come to the Herm Memorial Library to pick up your craft bags, all of this stuff will be inside of it, so you won't need to provide it. But if you can't make it to our library in Mifflinburg, you can still make this craft at home. All you're going to need is construction paper, markers, a spritzing water bottle, some glue, and of course your coffee filters. So on your coffee filter, first thing you want to do is lay it nice and flat. And then you want to get out your markers. You want to make sure that your markers are fresh, like this. See how nice and dark and bright that is? If your markers are dried out like this, and they don't come out as well, they don't show up as well like that, throw your marker out because that won't work for this craft. You're going to need a fresh marker, one that's got a lot of ink in it. And you want to color your entire coffee filter kind of like this. You can scribble, you can do strips, stripes, you can do squiggly lines, however you like. I found that broad stripes like this work best than your squiggly lines. But you kind of want to get as much of it covered as you can. Nice, nice broad strokes here. And you can do any colors you like. If you want to do just a red one, you can. If you want to do red and green, you can. I did all three colors because I just like the way that they blended together. And you can just color your entire coffee filter just like so. Then I recommend that you get a paper plate or a regular plate or a sheet of wax paper, something to protect your tabletop because this makes a mess. And lay your coffee filter on top of that. Now it's really important that on your spray bottle that you have the nozzle set to mist. You do not want a direct fire spray like a, a, a nozzle spray because that will make your colors bleed and run too hard. You just want a gentle mist. And you just want to lightly spray your coffee filter until it's all nice and wet. And then just let it work its magic. And it will kind of bleed its colors together all the way around. And then you just want to sit and let that dry. So we're going to set that over here to dry. And I have a dried filter that I did earlier. Actually, I have two of them here. We have one so you can kind of see what happens if you use a little bit of yellow or if you use a lot. So be creative with your imagination however you want to do. Let that dry till it's really good. If you're trying to hurry things along, you can put them in a warm oven with the oven off for about 15, 20 minutes and that will dry them up really hard. The next thing that you're going to need is going to be some construction paper. And you're going to need a template. In the kits at the library, we have included the template. It looks like this. But if you can't make it to the library, you can download this Apple template from, um, I can't read that upside down, I'm sorry. It's montutuposhlildivas.com. Uh, and um, we have that on our website there for you to, to go ahead and print off. Um, or if you can't find this one, any giant Apple um, print will do. You just Google Apple outlines and um, under the images and you'll be able to print something like this off. So what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna cut the template out and that's going to give you this shape. Now with this shape, the next step you want to do is to take your construction paper and with a marker or pencil, you want to trace all the way around your apple shape. And then you want to take your scissors and you want to cut out that apple shape. We've already done that. Ta-da! 
So when you've got it all cut out, now comes the fun part. Now you need to fold your apple in half. And starting at the bottom with about an inch from the edge, you need to start cutting. And you want to cut an outline of about an inch all the way around. All the way up to the top here, because this is where your see-through um, coffee filter is going to be. And you get a little piece like this that comes out, and this is what you're left with when you get that all removed. Doesn't that look cool? Then the next thing you need to do is flip it upside down and you want to put some glue along your edges. You'll notice that your coffee filter is only going to cover in like four spots. So you don't need glue all the way around unless you really want to. It gets kind of messy. But if you just want to put some glue here right where it's going to be at the bat, at the, the most tipping point, put them right there. And right here, you can also use a glue stick. If you're going to put it in your window though, I recommend the regular glue just because it will um, resist the sunlight better. And then just lay your coffee filter on top of the glue and gently press down and then let it dry. And ta-da, you have a fun see-through apple to hang in your windows. Isn't that cute? That worked out really well. Just make sure you let it dry thoroughly. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to make the paper plate apple. Let me clear this out of the way. For the paper plate apple, you're going to need a few other things that we've included in the paper plate apple kit at the library. You're going to need, obviously, a paper plate. And you're going to need the paper plate te apple template that we've included. You're also going to get in the kit some uh, two squares, or two rectangles actually, of green construction paper. You're going to get three strips of green construction paper. These are about um, not quite a half an inch wide by eight inches long. Then we're going to also give you a strip of brown construction paper, a black pop um, cutout circle, and we also have eyes. And we're going to need eyes for our worm. From home, you're going to need to provide the glue and the marker and the scissors to make this craft and the paint, unfortunately, because we don't know how to send paint home with you. So the first thing you're going to need to do when you um, come pick up your craft and want to do this is to paint your paper plate. And if you find there are different types of these inexpensive, cheap paper plates, some don't have that shiny, glossy finish. Those are preferable because paint does not adhere, adhere very well to the, um, to the shinier surface. You can kind of see as this example, um, we painted on it, that's just one coat and you can still kind of see how it was repelling the paint. It doesn't stick very well to it. So if all you have are the shiny paper plates at home, that's okay because if you flip over the shiny paper plate, it's that dull papery color and you can paint that just fine. As you can see here, we did that earlier. And there's that shiny surface front, and there is the painted top. And the library kits, we have the dollar paper plates, so it won't matter which side of the paper plate you paint. You just need to paint one side of it. So you just need some red paint of any kind that you want. I also recommend if you have a sponge brush to use a sponge brush. That way you're, you can pour the paint in the middle of the plate, and then your child can just smear it around with the sponge brush. You can also let them use their fingers to finger paint. Preschoolers love to finger paint. So once the plate is dry, then you want to take your template and you want to cut your template out. And if you want to have your child practice, if you want to have your child practice doing this, this is great. Um, otherwise you can do it for them if you think they're not quite ready for scissors. Um, and then when they get the template here, you just want to place it on the plate as best as you can and you want to cut it out. And you're really just going to be cutting around the edges here and then coming in at the top where the um, stem and the leaves are going to be and then coming in along the sides again and again on the bottom here where the stem is where the where the apple actually attaches to the tree and so it doesn't really look a whole much like an apple shape per se but it will when we're all done and so there's that if you want to um, round off your edges a little bit you can um, if you're a bit of a perfectionist you can round them off so that they look a little bit nicer. 
that's going to be your basis for your apple. The next step we're going to do is to um, make our leaves. And for your leaves, you can either free draw a leaf shape. And to do that, you just want to kind of come up and come to a point and then come down a nice wide base shape like that. You can trace that for your preschooler and then they can practice cutting those out too. And I recommend you put both squares together and cut at the same time. That makes it easier. And then you can come around and there you have your leaves. Isn't that easy? And then for the um, stem, you're going to take the brown um, piece of construction paper we gave you and decide how long you want your stem to be. And you can either do a rounded top like we did, or you can do kind of a concave kind of top. It all depends on how you want your stem to look. So we'll do a concave one that time. Now we're going to go ahead and glue. You want to flip your paper plate over and you want to put some glue on here for your stem. And glue that on there like so. And you want to glue your leaves on also. Small one. Oops. I'm going to glue it on this side so we don't see the marker that we drew. And then glue it like so. And like so. If you want to glue some leaves in the front, you can. Um, you can. You don't have to do exactly like we've done it. Um, I think on mine, we on the sample one, we actually put the leaves kind of in front of the of the stem a little bit, like so, just to give it a little bit of depth. Then with your marker, you can either use a fine tip marker or just a regular marker, whichever you find easier to do. And you can draw your leaf lines, and they're just going to come on up here. Oh, that marker's dying too. We're just going to come on up here and. Draw some leaf lines. Like this. And draw some leaf lines like this. And there's your leaves. Now, the last thing we need to do is to make our worm. So on your three green strips that you have here, you kind of want to cut them into thirds. So you're going to be like that and like that. And now we have to wrap them into circles. And you're going to need tape for this unless you prefer to use glue. And you just want to tape all these circles together. And we're going to make like a woven chain like what we used to do to make Christmas garland. So there's one. And then we're going to run another one through like so. And you don't need a lot of tape. And you can decide how big or how small you want your worm to be, how many segments you want him to have. Um, I think we have 10 segments. I think we gave you enough paper to give you 10 segments if you wish. Um, but you can have fewer or greater. Um, it's up to you how you want to do your worm. And you just want to keep weaving them um, around each other so that you get kind of a, a chain like. And try not to get your tape to stick to each other. Parents, you might find it'd be easier to give your kiddos um, little pieces of tape rather than asking them to tape because they'll go through a lot of tape and you'll have too much. So maybe if you want to like cut some strips of tape for them and put on the side of the table for them to use as they're doing this, that might make that a little bit easier. So we're only going to give our, our worm here, like, a few of them here for now in the, in the effort to save on time here. And so that's how he is like that. Now your black hole is where he's going to come out of the apple at. And we've also included in each kit one of these brass, um, oh, I can't remember what you call these things now. Um, I think they're, they're bars or something. But um, you can go ahead and push them through the center of the hole like that. And you're also going to want to push them through the last, last segment of your worm right through his tail here, just like that. And then push him through like that. Now I do recommend that parents help out with this. And you're gonna to wanna to punch a hole through the plate 
for it to go through because these are a little bit harder and we don't want kids getting hurt. And those um, brass bar, brads won't go through the, um, the paper plate very well. As you can see, I had, really had to work that scissors to get through to make that little hole. So we want to just push this through just like that. And on the flip side, you want to lay it flat. This will give your worm freedom of movement around the, the um, apple as he's looking around. And last but not least, we need to give him some eyes. And we've included in your kit small eyes. As you can see in my collection of eyes here, we have quite a variety of sizes. If you um, can't pick up a kit from the library, you want to go find the smallest eyes you can find at the store. Um, we don't want them to be very big at all. They've got to fit on the head of your worm. So that size eyes would be about perfect. And then we're going to take your glue again. And we're just going to put some here on the top of our worm, just a strip like so, and we're going to put our eyes on, like so. And then you're just going to want to let them dry. And underneath him, using your pen, you can draw a smile, because Will is very happy to be with his friend. And you can just make sure that that dry is good. Once it's all dry, you, your child can hang and display his new friend, Mac and Will, for everybody to appreciate. So I hope you enjoyed our crafts today, our, um, our coffee filter craft and our wormy apple craft. And we look forward to seeing you guys again next week. Thanks so much for coming. Bye.